What are the next things that are going to be attacked? Because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history, in recent American history. The president taking a bold shot at the 74 million Americans who voted for President Trump in 2020. Congressman Byron Donald, a member of the House Oversight Committee, joins us now. Congressman, good morning to you. A lot of people are saying that MAGA crowd comment from the president yesterday reminds them of something Hillary Clinton said in 2016. Put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. Yeah, and that moment from Hillary Clinton, it fired up the wrong group of people. It fired up Republicans, Trump supporters. So is history going to repeat itself? Is uh, the president going to live to see the day that he regrets that he said that? Uh, first of all, what the president said was just ignorant. If you've been watching Antifa move through the streets of America, you would know better. Um, but of course, the president doesn't even know who Antifa is. He says that's an idea, if you remember the presidential debates from a year and a half ago. But this is bigger than that. You have a president who is an elitist, who doesn't know what he's doing. So Republican voters are already mobilized and ready to go. This just adds more fuel to the fire. You know, yeah. Congressman, when the president says stuff like the ultra MAGA crowd, they're really trying to isolate voters with that. They're really trying to assign labels like white supremacy and, and xenophobes. But the MAGA crowd is America first. Doesn't that mean all Americans first? Well, look, I'm going to tell you right now, in our politics, you have people who, ve who vehemently disagree on what the policies should be and, frankly, what the politics should be. But when you do this to Americans, when you try to divide them because of who they support uh, to be president of the United States in the future or who they've supported in the past, that is outrageous. I thought Joe Biden wanted to stand for unity. He's never stood for that. He's been one of the most divisive presidents we've ever had. Well, your colleague in California, Eric Swalwell, also said something notable this week, um, and, and we want to get your response to it. He posted a tweet saying, the Republicans won't stop with banning abortion. They want to ban interracial marriage. Do you want to save that? Then you should probably vote. What's your reaction to that comment from Swalwell? Oh, my comment was what I tweeted back at him. He is a fool. He is a moron. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He, all he's doing is gaslighting black voters, which is something the Democrats do all the time. Let me take Eric Swalwell down memory lane. In 1924, in the state of Virginia, there was the Racial Integrity Act that was passed by Democrats. That is what made inter interracial marriages illegal in the state of Virginia, which led to the Loving decision in 1967. It is the Republican Party that is always stood for civil rights for black Americans in the United States. So he doesn't just get to flip the script today. The reality is we've always stood behind interracial marriage. We always will stand behind interracial marriage. Eric Swalwell is a clown, pure and simple. Congressman, real quick, it seems like Democrats are taking what's happening with the Supreme Court, specifically abortion, and they're bringing in interracial marriage, they're bringing in gay marriage, and they're trying to fearmonger and stoke fear. Is that because they don't believe that this specific issue of abortion is enough to maybe save them in the primaries? Oh, that's absolutely correct. What the Democrats will never acknowledge is that abortion has been a very divisive issue in the United States. It's never been a 70-30 issue in the United States. It's been very divided. So they can't run campaigns just purely on abortion. What they're going to try to do is run it on taking away quote-unquote rights. But if you actually read the draft opinion from Samuel Alito, they're very clear that this is actually tied specifically to Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey, no more, no less. But they don't want want to just keep it to abortion. They want to expand it. Congressman Byron Donalds, thank you so much for joining us this month. Thank you so much. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.